On a sunny March day in 1979, a large group of people gathered together on the University of Pennsylvania campus. They met not to protest, but to proclaim their loyalty to the Penn Quakers basketball team, winners of the NCAA Eastern Regionals. The Quakers had made college basketball's Final Four, yet it wasn't only the Penn fans who felt proud. There were also those in the crowd who called Villanova, Temple, St. Joseph's, or LaSalle their alma mater. On this day, the divisions of schools were forgotten, and the Philadelphia Big Five united as one. Standing but a short walk away from the rally is the Palestra, one of the most storied basketball buildings in the country. It is here where Big Five games are played, but it is more than just a place to see a game. Listen to the men who play there. There's nothing like it. I'll tell you, you walk out there and the adrenaline just starts flowing. And you really get excited and you really want to play. And it, it really pumps you up. And it's, I can't express the feeling that you get just being out there. The feeling of excitement and emotion is just there when you walk onto the plester floor. You have chills just running up and down your body. And you just can't wait for game time to start to get it on. Hello, I'm Keith Farham here at the Palestra right now. And uh, when this place has 9,280 fans here, it's really something to see. They are five schools, all within 10 miles of each other. The players hail from places like New York City, the Wisconsin Dairyland, the Florida Keys, and West Philadelphia. They are the St. Joseph's Hawks, the Temple Owls, the Penn Quakers, the Villanova Wildcats, the LaSalle Explorers. All are rich in basketball tradition. They are the Philadelphia Big Five. Philadelphia is America's fourth largest city, supported by six television stations and four daily newspapers. The Spectrum and Veterans Stadium serve as homes to the 76ers and Phillies, but Philadelphia has much more. Unique to the city is the Big Five, a college basketball pairing unparalleled in its history, tradition, and personality. There is all the excitement that is inherent in any college game, plus a special feeling hey, you start. simply let's can't get really anywhere else. Hey, here it is. This is what we want. We held them the last game. We want 40. Patience and poise, no second shots, run our break, and we'll win the game. Come what do you say? Let's go! 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 When a Big Five game is played, you throw the records out. One loss marks are forgotten. This keen competition is but one of the Big Five's attractions, and it was a major reason why heavily recruited Tom Leifson came from Long Island to the University of Pennsylvania. No matter how good the teams are, it's always you know, a great game. I mean, three points is a blowout. It makes for exciting basketball. A Big Five game is a roller coaster ride. Your team can be in firm command. Then it's the other fellow's turn. And yet the Big Five spectators get more enjoyment out of each contest because they know the game. Philadelphia fans are among the most knowledgeable, appreciating subtleties and strategies. Throwing the ball inside. You turned to go screen away before you had to. Mommy, if you can get your pin in there, we'll kick it straight into you. Go to work. Get the shot that we want to get. We want a little bit more control of the ball offensively right from the start. Every time we get it. You got to play Black, you got to play Clark, and you got to play Boo with the Bones. That's all. Okay? Throw, throw. Then you come here, Aaron. Come right here. Alex, stay right here. Get it. Take it right to the back. The X's and O's of all the coaches are well tested even before the City Series gets underway. Each school has been to the NCAA Final Four, and their big-time schedules have made this feat even more impressive. Recent opponents included powerhouses like Kentucky, Duke, DePaul, North Carolina, St. John's, Syracuse, and Notre Dame. All Big Five teams have the opportunity to earn automatic NCAA tournament bids, with teams participating in the Ivy League, Eastern Eight, and East Coast Conference. 
Most Philadelphia fans, young and old alike, agree there is nothing that can top the intensity, the gamut of emotion, or the thrill of the Big Five City Series. All primary reasons, Boo Williams came from Hampton, Virginia to St. Joe's University. Since the schools are so close playing in the Philestra, you seem like you know everybody there. You seem like a family getting together playing a big game. And that also is important in bringing players in because you know just because you play a, a team like Bill Nova, that on the game you're, it's all for war, but after the game you still have friendships after the game. No rivalry is more intense than the Villanova Wildcats St. Joseph's Hawks. In 1979, the Hawks enjoyed their best record in several seasons, making the NIT with a new look on the attack, the four to score offense. It baffled opponents and helped St. Joe to 19 victories. A scrappy swarming zone made the Hawks one of the nation's best on defense. All in all, it was a great season for first-year coach Jim Lynham, himself a member of the Big Five Hall of Fame. In the Villanova game, the Hawks fell behind early, yet rallied back with a patient offense paced by Norman Black, the second leading scorer in school history. On defense, the Hawks, led by the shot blocking of center Boo Williams, allowed no scoring in the final minutes, sending the game into overtime. Once more, St. Joseph's patience paid off. Lynham's calculating offense maintained control, then set up the game-winning shot, a rocket from guard Luke Griffin that went in with just seconds to play. It was the biggest win and a great season for St. Joseph's. But winning basketball is no stranger to the inhabitants of Hawk Hill. The mainline school has had its share of great teams and great individual stars. In the mid-60s, the hero was number 30, Cliff Anderson, the all-time City Series leading scorer. Anderson paired with guard Matt Gukas, number 24, for one of the toughest one-two punches in Big Five history. In the early 70s, another powerhouse led by number 44, Mike Bantam, carried the Hawks to glory and national recognition. Bantam, an Olympic squad member, Gukas, and several other teammates later went on to play pro ball. Yet they remain a cherished part of Hawk basketball history. Also on the main line is Villanova University, an outstanding institution that boasts equally over its excellent basketball teams. In the early 60s, local Philly product Hubie White, number 13, was the Wildcats star. He was followed in 1962 by another hometown hero, Wally Jones, number 24. Jones was just one of many Wildcats, such as Jim Washington, Bill Melchioni, Chris Ford, Tom Inglesby, John Olive, and Keith Heron, who have competed successfully in the professional ranks. Then in 1971, Howard Porter, number 55, led the Cats to the NCAA championship game against UCLA. Four of those five starters went on to professional ball. Today, Eastern 8 Coach of the Year, Roley Massimino, has another group of budding youngsters, including number 42, Alex Bradley of Long Branch, New Jersey. He was a starter as a freshman and team captain while only a sophomore, a challenge he readily accepted. It definitely helped me grow. At first, I didn't, I didn't know how to uh, accept it because I was only a sophomore, but uh, I accepted the role very much because I really wanted to. It's something that I wanted to do. I'm, I'm always willing to become uh, the best person and player that I can possibly be. With Bradley and other talented youngsters like Tom Sinkowitz of East Rutherford, New Jersey, the basketball fortunes of Villanova are in the very capable hands of Coach Roley Massimino. Well, Coach is, uh, coach is like a father in, to our, our team. He, he's, he makes sure that you go to school and that you work, and that's the most important part. And then on the court, he's, he's a very good floor coach, and he, and he prepares you well for the games. Yes, the cats are on the prowl. At LaSalle, Coach Paul Westhead has consistently fielded exciting basketball teams. 
No other Big Five team scored more often than the Explosive Explorers in 1979, as four men averaged in double figures, with a fifth only percentage points behind. The Explorers loved to run. But along with brilliant individual efforts comes a basic offensive plan, a plan centered around All-American Michael Brooks. Brooks has won every meaningful award in Eastern basketball, has been named to play in the Pan American Games, and is certain to be drafted by the pros. Yet Brooks sees opportunities the Big Five has given him for more conventional employment as well. Basically, it's just, you know, everyone knows who you are. And you don't have to worry about finding a job when you get out of school. Um, you know, you can just go into a corporation and say, you know, I'm a graduate of LaSalle or Temple or Penn or St. George Villanova, <clears throat> and I'm interested in looking for a job. And he said, oh, yeah, you know, I remember you. I saw you play. You know, I'm a Big Five fan, and take it from there. LaSalle College offers an excellent academic program to its students, and many basketball alums have gone on to rewarding jobs when their playing days were over. One is Tom Gola, a Philadelphia businessman and politician, and former coach of the famous 1969 Explorer Squad, a team that lost only once in 24 games. With Larry Cannon and Ken Durrett leading the way, LaSalle enjoyed its finest Big Five season since winning the NCAA title in 1954. 1969 was a memorable year for the Explorers, but it was a good year for the entire Big Five, too. Sharing the spotlight with LaSalle were Coach Harry Litwack's Temple Owls. The unsung Owls came out of nowhere to win the National Invitational Tournament on the efforts of players like Joe Cromer and Johnny Baum, now a successful banker in Philadelphia. Ten years after their greatest triumphs, the two squads met again at the Palestra for an anniversary game. The date was February 10th, 1979. Cromer, Durrett, Cannon, Baum, Taylor. All of the stars return to relive one more time that greatest of seasons. Most of these fabulous players had flourished in the NBA and ABA, but they came back to the schools they loved. In the end, Temple won, but it was a treat for the fans to see these two teams and to reminisce over one of the most sparkling seasons the Big Five has ever enjoyed. Temple, a school of national academic repute, also enjoys a rich basketball heritage. In 1955 and 56, All-American guard Guy Rogers kept the Owls near the top of the national polls. He teamed with Hal King Lear to form one of the most dangerous backcourts in college basketball history. Rogers' quick hands made him a top defensive performer and his offensive skills were even more breathtaking. In 1979, District 3 Coach of the Year Don Casey had the services of yet another great guard, number 21 Rick Reed, a Philadelphia product who chose to play his college ball at home. Reed was Temple's floor leader and top scorer. More than one scout called him the best point guard in the nation. Temple was ranked in the top 15 for most of the season. For Reed's backcourt mate number four, Keith Parham, national recognition was one more advantage to playing in the Big Five. It was fun because you, you, had, you had a lot of people you know, looking for you. You know, when we came down to play, you know, everybody wanted to see the top-ranked team. You know, Temple, let's see what they're like. You know, do they really deserve their ranking? And I, I think we really proved that we did deserve them. It was another fine year for the Owls. A share of the Big Five title and a trip to the NCAA tournament. But the most exciting story belonged to the University of Pennsylvania. A member of the prestigious Ivy League, Penn's recent basketball history has been equally as impressive. 
In the early 70s, the Quakers fielded a national power with stars like Corky Calhoun, Bobby Morris, Dave Wall, and Phil Hankinson. They established pen trademarks that still exist today. Swiss watch precision on offense and a stifling and tireless defense. Number 31, Bobby Morris, was almost impossible to stop near the basket. And number 20, Corky Calhoun, used muscle and quickness to add additional scoring punch. Although a national title eluded the Quakers, this team is still considered to be one of the Big Five's best. But in 1979, Coach Bob Weinauer and his team surpassed the accomplishments set eight years before. Their success earned Weinauer recognition as Eastern Basketball Magazine's Coach of the Year, as Penn won a share of the Big Five crown and breezed to their eighth Ivy League title in ten years. Using quickness and instinct on defense, the Quakers rolled to 22 victories and a berth in the NCAA Eastern playoffs. No one expected them to advance much further. But the Penn players and their fans had a secret. They could play with the best, and they proved it by knocking off in succession Iona, North Carolina, and Syracuse to advance to the championship game of the Eastern Regionals. The opponents were the Red Men of St. John's, but Penn had come too far to quit now. Seniors Tony Price, who came to the Big Five from New York City, and Tim Smith, a local product from West Philadelphia High School, put the Quakers on top early. Then down the stretch, it was Penn's tough defense that made the difference. Key plays by number three, James Booney Salters, helped the Quakers to a 64-62 win over the Redmen sending Penn to Salt Lake City as Eastern champions. Left in their wake were the best teams of the touted Atlantic Coast Conference and the top teams of the East. And no one was prouder of Penn's win than Big Five followers. One of their brothers had made it to the Final Four. As one Big Five coach put it, we're all Penn fans right now. really is the beauty of the Big Five. Intense rivalries tempered with friendship, great basketball, and much more. I think it has everything to offer to a, an athlete. It has uh, the publicity and the exposure of all the major TV and, and newspapers, and it has the competition of all the big schools like Duke and Notre Dame that you play at the Palestra and on the road. And I think education-wise, uh, it's five schools that are academically well-established. You can come to any Big Five game, no matter what team's records are, and the game can go either way. And the fans are behind both teams 100%. And there's nothing like it. It's unbelievable. The Big Five. There is nothing like it any place else. Spirit, tradition, excitement, excellent academics, superb media exposure, future job opportunities, and some of the best coaching in the country. It all adds up to spectacular basketball. And it's all at LaSalle, Penn, St. Joe's, Temple, Villanova. The Philadelphia Big Five.